One of the easiest ways to improve the quality of your live streaming setup is to use your DSLR, your camcorder, or any other video camera. And the process to do it is actually super simple. And to show you how simple it is, in this video, we're gonna run you through step-by-step -step exactly how to use a video camera for live streaming. Hey, it's Justin from Primal Video, where we help you leverage video to amplify your business and brand. And in this video, we're gonna be stepping you through how to use your DSLR, your camcorder, or any other video camera next time you go live. And the process works even if you're not live streaming and you just wanna use that camera or DSLR as a webcam for an interview or for a presentation or pretty much any other online video. And while we're stepping through the process, I'll also touch on some of my favorite software for live streaming. But I wanna hear from you guys. What software do you use the most and why? Drop a note in the comments below and take a look at what some of the other people are commenting as well because you might find some cool new tools. All right, so step number one, or the first thing you're going to need is an HDMI interface unit or an HDMI capture card. Some way to get the video feed from your camera into your computer. Now we'll have links down in the description to everything that we're gonna mention in this video, but Blackmagic is a company that makes some really great gear for doing exactly this. I'm a big fan of the Ultra Studio Mini Recorder, which sells for around the $145 price point. This one is Thunderbolt only and Mac only, but it will let you plug in both HDMI or SDI cameras. Now another great option by Blackmagic if you're on Windows or you're looking for a USB 3 equivalent, if you don't have Thunderbolt, then you can check out the Intensity Shuttle. And you can pick these up for around the $199 price point. Another company that makes really great HDMI interface units is called Epifan. There's two main ones that they sell. One of them is a 1080p version, and the other one is a 4K version, selling for around $399 and $499. And the biggest advantage with these ones is that whether you're on Mac or PC, there's no drivers or software or anything that you need to install to get them up and running. So they are probably the easiest to get running, but they are a little bit more expensive. Now there's lots of other options out there as well, but these ones are really my go-to recommendations. We've also used a few devices from Elgato and while they work well for the live streaming side a lot of them can't easily be used to mimic a webcam or to be used as a webcam inside of apps like Skype. So yeah check out the Blackmagic or the Epifan. So now that you've got your HDMI interface unit sorted the next thing you're going to need is a camera with clean HDMI output. So the video feed that's coming out of your camera through HDMI is clean. It doesn't have all of your camera status and display and battery level and record time and all that information. Some cameras actually output that through HDMI with no way of turning it off. Now this can be the case with all different brands of cameras, but there are a lot of Canon cameras specifically that don't give you that clean HDMI output or the video feed without all your camera data on it. Now this isn't the case for most cameras, but you will wanna do a quick Google search for your camera make and model with the words clean HDMI afterwards to see if your camera actually has clean HDMI output. Otherwise, the video feed or all the video footage you're gonna get out of that camera while you're live streaming will have all of your camera data on it too. The next step then is to connect everything up. So plug your camera into your interface unit and then connect the interface unit into your Mac or PC. And then open up either your live streaming app, things like OBS, Wirecast, vMix, Ecamm, whatever it is you're using to live stream, or whatever it is you're using for video communication, whether it's Skype or Zoom or any other platform. Then it's just a matter of selecting your webcam or your video source to be that interface unit, which is your camera. Now, depending on your computer, which camera you're using and which interface you're using, there can be some delay between the audio and the video if you're using a microphone that's not connected to the camera itself. So if you're using a podcast style microphone directly into the computer, then you can sometimes have delay between the audio going directly into your computer and the video coming through the HDMI interface unit. Now, there's a couple of ways that you can overcome this. If you have the ability to plug in your microphones or your audio directly into your camera itself, Itself, then that HDMI feed from your camera into your computer is going to have the audio perfectly in sync because it's all coming from the camera itself. Another way that you can fix this if your video and audio are slightly out of sync is if you're using software for live streaming like vMix or Wirecast, you actually have the option to adjust the delay on the audio so that it can match your camera and stay in sync while people are watching. So that's how easy it is to use your DSLR, your mirrorless or your video cameras for live streaming or for things like Skype calls or Zoom calls as well. Now, if you're interested in finding out how you can live stream on YouTube with more than one person on the stream with you, then check out the video linked on screen and I'll see you soon.